Welcome to Bath Talks with Jim Bruce. Hi everybody, welcome to Bath Talks Road Edition. Uh, I'm on the road right now doing stand-up. The bubble's not nearly as impressive as normal because Amori Arce wasn't able to come on the road. That's the kind of thing that makes you appreciate good technical work because the bubbles, they're fine, but that's not professional bubbles. These are the bubbles of an amateur. So much thanks to Amori for the usual quality of the bubbles, but there are bubbles and there's a bathtub. Actually, pretty amazing bathtub. So I'm on the road right now doing stand-up. Um, I was in Laughlin, Nevada, uh, Shallow, Arizona, and Phoenix, respectively, at the Edgewater Casino, the Honda Casino, and the Grid in Mesa, Arizona, doing comedy. Really had a lot of fun. Um, before I move on, I'd just like to show you a quick clip of one of the shows I did. This would be the first night at... Um, uh, the Edgewater Casino in the Inferno Room. So let's take a look at that right now. Recently we celebrated our anniversary, which was nice. This is how my wife wanted to celebrate. This was her idea, I promise you, not my idea. She wanted to celebrate by going out and having car sex. You know what? Yeah, I'm gonna believe it. I'm in my forties. Let me tell you what car sex is like when you're in your forties. It was a month ago, my back still hurts. <laughs> That's what car sex is. Car sex, people think car sex is a sexy option. Car sex is not a sexy option. Car sex is what you do when you don't have an option. That's what you do. You know, you know my favorite place to have sex? A comfortable bed. That's my favorite place. Anytime I hear somebody have car sex in their 40s, all I ever think is, ah, that's too bad you're homeless. That sucks. <laughs> Cool, and I think you can tell I had a good time. Uh, it was a fun show, and the shows just got better and better and better. I love doing comedy on the road. We're amazing crowds. Uh, ate some terrible food at uh, buffets, and by the way, the buffets were good. It's just that eventually you're sick of buffet food. I ate uh, at the buffet six times in a row, six meals in a row. That's too much buffet, but it's also free. If you're a stand-up comic, you know what you do. You eat all the free food you can. So that by the time you get home, you've definitely made a profit doing stand-up. Uh, I love doing stand-up and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about my journey as a stand-up. And then maybe you could apply it to your own life and maybe dreams that you've put off. There's a great movie called The Natural. I don't know if you've seen The Natural. My friend Paul does not like The Natural, but I love it. It's one of my favorite movies starring Robert Redford. And it's about a baseball player. And what it's about is in the beginning of the movie, he's a young baseball player who's an amazing pitcher. But something happens in life that pulls him away from baseball, and he ends up not playing baseball for some 20 years. And he eventually comes back to it. Now he's an old man. He struggles to get even a chance, but it turns out he's a good hitter. And he gets a second chance at fulfilling his dream of being a professional baseball player. And sometimes I look at that and I can relate to it as a stand-up, because I was always very natural at stand-up. Stand-up was one of my few gifts, you know. I was able to do it when I was very young, and I was pretty good at it, you know. I could I could get laughs, and I could get bookings, and I could get rebookings. And then, um, in my mid-twenties, I went through a major depression. And at the time, I didn't really identify that that was a depression. I just didn't feel like doing anything. So I got a day job and I did my best, you know, I worked because you gotta work and I would get writing gigs and I would do some jobs here and there and I would do stand-up now and then, but I didn't really pursue stand-up passionately because I didn't have a lot of passion in me because I just suffered from depression and I didn't know it and I was sad about a lot of things, a little bit of my mother's death and a little bit of wondering my life is the way that it is and some chemicals that, you know, eventually realized that I wasn't entirely right chemically and that uh, it had a lot to do with my diet and whatever and there's a lot of things that play into depression but as a result I wasted a lot of time not doing stand-up, not doing the things I meant to do and I think about it the most after an amazing set uh, Saturday and Sunday and Monday, I mean goodness knows I had these three amazing sets with audiences coming up to me and thanking me for what I had done and how 
fun, much fun they had had, and how funny I was, and oh, and they would quote jokes to me, which, as a comic, I tell you, I love that. I love after a set if somebody says, oh, that joke, and they quote it, and they quote it correctly, blows my mind. And I realized, well, this is what I should be doing, this is what I was supposed to be doing, but because I struggled with sadness, and I struggled with self-doubt, I spent a lot of time not doing that. And so for the last seven, eight years, I've been really committed to doing it. And now that I've identified the depression, if it raises its ugly head, I'm able to cope with it better. And I don't put stand-up to the side because I realize that stand-up is my therapy. Um, so one of the things that I'd suggest to you, if you struggle, identify what you're struggling with. Maybe you're struggling with depression. Maybe there's something else you're struggling with, if it's chemical addiction or if it's alcoholism or just a bad relationship. But whatever it is, the first step is just identify your problem. And there aren't one, there isn't one solution for everybody. AA is a wonderful solution for some people who drink, but for some people it doesn't work. The point is, you need a solution, but you have to identify the problem, whatever your problem is. And, and believe me, Alcoholics Anonymous is amazing. This is not about that. It's just about you, you and your journey. So there's this generic idea of find a solution. Your solution might not be the same as everybody else's. But if, like me, you've struggled with depression off and on, just know that that doesn't have to own you. You know, you can own your depression. You can own it and use it as a tool to climb out of it. That's what I do. I own it. You know, I've struggled with depression. I had a big problem with bulimia for a number of years. <laughs> I've had my share of problems. I've had this bad haircut the whole time. I don't think that that's resolvable. I don't think anybody can help me there, but you know, I've made peace with it at least. So if you have a dream deferred, um, and even if you don't, even if you don't see yourself as a person with a big dream, I guarantee you you've got a dream. You've got aspirations, even if it's something as noble and pure as just loving somebody right. That good dream of yours doesn't have to be deferred. So recognize your problem and um, know that you're a good person and know that you have something to contribute and that if you don't identify your problem, not only do you hurt yourself, what you do, but you hurt all those people that you could currently be contributing to. And anytime I'm on the road, I remember that. I remember, well, this is where I can contribute. You know, these people are on their vacation away from lives that I'll never know the details of, but you know, maybe they're having a rough time at home. Maybe they're having trouble paying their bills. Maybe it's just kind of hard to deal with your kids and it was nice to get away. And that's what I'm there for. I'm there for a fun distraction to make them laugh and enjoy. So whatever your dream is, whatever your contribution is, don't let your fears or your depression or whatever get in the way. And if you are struggling with depression, there is help out there. And uh, I hope that you get it. And uh, I'd like to end with a clip of me dancing Sunday night in the nightclub. Afterwards, they had a dance night with the DJ. Take a note of how many people were there. Not a lot of people cared for the uh, dancing on Sunday night. Let's take a look at that clip. In the morning, you see how I be. I don't know what you heard about me. But I can't give it to me. I drive a Cadillac with a bump in the... All right, cool. Uh, by the way, this bath is actually the bath of my friend Paul Coble. Right before they get going to the grid. Because both of the hotels, for some reason, had showers. And I don't do shower talks. That would be weird. Shower talks. Ugh. Bath Talks is a Jim Bruce production. Bubbles provided by Amori Arce. If you enjoyed Bath Talks, click subscribe.